Hey y'all, I'm Cece, and today I am here with my second installment of Hall of Fame. Sorry, what? We're out of digital Fs? What is that even? So it's gonna have to still be Hall of Shame then? No, that's fine, I can, that's fine. Welcome to the second episode of Hall of Shame. So basically in 2020, I got super behind in doing book hauls, but I still wanted to be able to talk about all of the books that I received last year and that I bought last year. So we are doing a, a whole series, a mini series on my channel where I talk about all of the books that I acquired while we were kind of in lockdown last year. This is episode two. Welcome to the books that I acquired in May of 2020. As usual, I have all of these split up by how I acquired them. So we have some books that were sent to me by publishers, some books that were sent to me by some of you, um, either through my Amazon wishlist or doing some ARCs for trade. And then of course, as usual, I have my stack of books that I bought myself. So these are kind of all over the place, age group, genre-wise, but I'll get into all of that as we go through them. I think I'm gonna start by talking about the books I was sent by publishers. That's usually how we start these things. So settle in. I hope you're ready. Let's talk about some books I bought a while ago. Editing CC here. First of all, yes, I chopped off all my hair uh, since I filmed this video originally, so excited about that. As much fun as I was having not cutting my hair, um, my hair is a huge part of my self-expression, so chopping it off so that I can't feel any hair on my neck very big deal. I'm also here to tell you about this video's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. It has thousands of classes in design, photography, freelancing, and so much more. Skillshare allows you to learn what you want to learn and grow at your own pace, and it has been an invaluable resource for me. Today, I wanted to recommend Intro to Digital Painting, which is a class run by Mimi Chow. I think I've been talking pretty openly about about getting started with digital art and what that means for me, and I've been exploring more of my own projects by posting them on Instagram. This class in particular was so helpful because it was about creating a workflow. I'm someone who kind of gets an idea in my head and I go off in a million different directions. So being able to look at my workflow, figuring out what works for me, and to be able to create a project over the course of the class was incredibly helpful. If you are interested in this class or one of Skillshare's many, many other classes, premium membership will give you unlimited access to everything on their site, and that premium membership works out to be less than $10 a month. Plus, the first 1,000 of my subscribers who click the link in the description are going to get a free trial of that Skillshare membership to explore for your curiosity and creativity. Skillshare has been a huge supporter and inspiration in exploring more of my own content here and in trying so many new things, so definitely check out the link down in the description. It would mean the world to me. Thank you again so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and now I will let long-haired Cece get back to talking about all of the books that she bought a little while ago back to you. So first I have a book that was sent to me by Echo and that is Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. Exciting Times is um, adult contemporary fiction. It is... It's by an Irish author. I believe it's set in Ireland. Ava, newly arrived in Hong Kong from Dublin. So is about a woman who is kind of caught in a love triangle between a man and a woman. So bisexual love triangle. Um, and it's about like is she going to stay with someone who she's had like an established relationship with or is she going to maybe choose someone who represents something exciting and a potential for a different kind of life? I'm very curious about this. It's queer, which is why they emailed me and asked if I wanted to read it. I think it has a fabulous cover. I think it's so simple but wonderful and I'll let you know what I think about it when I read it. I also have a book from Wednesday Books and that is Lobizona by Romina Garber. This is... Oh god. <laughs> I used to have like, I used to have my description of this book down and it's just been a minute. So this is a YA book. Um, oh, <laughs> sticker keeps coming out of there. It came with a sticker. What is happening? There you go. Sticker. But this follows a 16 year old. It's a YA book and uh, this girl is on the run from her father's Argentine crime family. Um, and while she is on the run, she ends up in this place where 
the impossible is real. Curious about that, I tried to read this last year and I didn't get to it because it was the, it was the tail end of me finishing any books in 2020. <laughs> it would not have happened, but I'm so excited that they sent this to me because it fits the theme of so many other books I have, so it can fit it into so many different reading vlogs and I'm crossing my fingers that I'm really gonna love it. Also in May, leading into June, I got this really cute, like, queer books care package from Sourcebooks. Um, it included, I think, four titles that they sent me. One of them I'm not gonna talk about. It's Reverie by Ryan Lasala. It is queer YA fantasy. I've talked about this book so many fucking times. It's about a boy who I believe sees other worlds and I don't know anything else about it. They've just sent me several different copies of Reverie, so I feel like I've covered it in hauls before. But if you're curious, I will link a place on the screen where I've talked about the book more in detail. Uh, they also sent me The Dark Tide by Alicia Jasinska. This is a YA fantasy about um, this place where every year, um, I believe a girl has to be sacrificed. Oh, a boy. Specifically a boy. Basically, they have to sacrifice someone every year to keep the city from sinking. This girl believes absolutely that her brother is going to be chosen, and so she starts working with this boy who's, like, her secret love, and they draw the attention of the queen, and the boy that this girl loves is chosen as the sacrifice. So, this girl and the queen, they meet they have a conversation, they have a time limit, but as the two of them talk, this they start to bond more and hate each other less. So this has some queer elements going in that direction. It is dark YA fantasy, and I think it has a gorgeous cover, so that was part of the, like, queer care package. Another book that was part of that was This Book is Gay by Juno Dawson, with an introduction by David Levithan. I have been very excited about this. This is full of a ton of different stuff. It's young adult nonfiction. It includes, like, definitions, labels. It includes testimonies from a bunch of different queer people, explorations of stories for people in the closet, out of the closet. I have wanted to read this for a while. I have huge, huge respect for Juno Dawson. Her work, her books, the, like, it, the scrutiny that she's faced, and I was thrilled to finally have a copy of This Book is Gay, because it is just, like, the most rainbow glorious gay thing in the world. If you know me at all, you know I cover my life in rainbows, so this is, this is everything. And the last thing that was included in that little, like, source books care package was actually a children's book, uh, Love is Love, this is written by Michael Genhart and illustrated by Ken Min. This is a children's book about a boy with two dads who is kind of facing the negatives of that for the first time and what that means for him and his family. I haven't looked through it yet, but I personally love and, like, collect queer children's books. I am a huge supporter of their existence and I also keep them because, you know, Eventually, I want to have a family and kids, and I would love to be able to have this full, beautiful collection of queer children's books because, like, because of the reality of us even having queer children's books. I think the art style is really, really cute, personally. But yeah, thank you so much to Sourcebooks for an incredible, like, a queer book package leading into Pride. It was a delightful package to receive, and I did a ton of rainbow posting in June on my Instagram, and it was very much appreciated. I also actually had one other, um, children's book, sort of. This one's a little older. This one's for ages eight and up, where the other one was, like, early readers. Kids, kids book. Um, but this is Rainbow Revolutionaries, 50 LGBTQ plus people who made history, written and illustrate- oh, written by Sarah Prager and illustrated by Sarah Papworth. Whew. I was sent this by, uh, Harper Kids, and I did, like, a picture promotion for this on Instagram. I'll put it up on the screen. This is an absolutely fabulous book that is like, what it says on the front, it's about 50 queer people throughout history and the influences that they have had. Each page comes with a little illustration and then a whole guide to the people who, like, are on each page. So many gorgeous illustrations, so many beautiful people, and I have read several pages of this. I have flipped through all the pictures. I think it's gorgeous. It's a fave of mine. I love taking pictures of this, so... 
two kids books. Weird for me. <laughs> Next, I have some books that were sent to me from my Amazon wish list. So I have a couple of graphic novels and then a different queer new release. Um, I've read two of these. So I've read Are You Listening by Tilly Walden. This is a YA fantasy graphic novel about two people who are both lesbians who meet while they are both running away from something. And as they are driving um, through West Texas, the landscape gets weirder and weirder and creepier. Tilly Walden is my favorite graphic novel artist in the world. I've loved reading this. I read it last summer. The note that I have in here says this was from Kat. Thank you so, so much, Kat. I have loved being able to grow my Tilly Walden graphic novel collection because I love Tilly's work so incredibly much. Another one that I read last year, we have Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganesho. This, again, YA graphic novel. It is about a boy who works in his parents' bakery and he really wants something more. He wants to stop working there. He wants to move to the city with his friends. Um, so he starts looking for someone to replace him at his parents' bakery and he happens to meet a boy who he thinks is the cutest. And the two of them start to fall for each other over the summer baking together. I believe I also read this for a vlog. If I didn't, then I'll attach the uh, wrap up and you can learn more about this book. It has a very nice, like, limited color art style that I think is lovely. And then the last book from my Amazon wish list is Compass Rose by Anna Burke. This is queer adult sci-fi. Wait, or is it fantasy? No, it's set in the future. <laughs> so this book is set in the year 2513, um, and this is about a girl named Rose. I think she has an uncanny sense of direction, basically, and this gets her a spot on a, a ship because ships rule the seas at this point in the future. So she gets sent on a mission uh, deep in pirate territory. She's on this crew, this misfit crew that she doesn't really get. She's under the command of Miranda, who she's unsure about, but she's also really pulled towards. So this is sci-fi, future set, pirate, sapphic lady romance. Fuck yes. This was sent to me by Reese. Thank you so much, Reese. I... I can't wait to read this. I was so hype about this release last year. I also have a couple of books that I got via ARCs for Trade. To sum up ARCs for Trade, ARCs are advanced reader copies that cannot be sold or exchanged for money in any way, so frequently reviewers will trade ARCs amongst each other. So last year in the April-May area, I was getting rid of a bunch of my old ARCs, and that means I was trading them with a bunch of other bloggers and getting new books. I have two books that I got in May via Arcs for Trade. We have... Now, I don't know if this is docile or docile, because in my brain, when I look at this word, I say docile, but that is not how everyone says it. <laughs> this is a book by K.M. Spera. I don't... I'm unsure about this book. <laughs> I traded for it because, like, I have to know. I want to be able to at least start reading this book, but no guarantees. This is set in a future where people can pay off their debts by becoming indentured servants. And there's also a very popular drug on the market that is supposed to, like, reduce how much you're taking in. Um, and frequently people who are dociles or dociles are uh, under the influence of this drug, just to make it easier to be part of that existence. This is not my traditional read, but I'll let you know. <laughs> That's all, that's all I'll say. And then the other book I traded for is actually not an ARC, it's just an older physical copy. I thought it was just gorgeous though. And that is this edition of Grimm's Fairy Tales. Uh, this is a selection of fairy tales by the Brothers Grimm. I was raised on the Brothers Grimm. My mom had a full bind up of all of their stories and I would select a story every couple of nights that my mom would read to me. So I was born and bred on Grimm's Fairy Tales and I have really wanted my own edition of some of my favorites. So this one I think is a gorgeous copy. It has like this cover, which is beautiful. The spine is beautiful. It's got these shiny silver edges and it is full of illustrations as well. So um, let's see. 
There we go. Here's one of the illustrations. There are certain things where, because they were read to me as a child, I would love to have full collections of them of my own someday. Grimm's Fairy Tales was one of them. This is not a full collection, but eventually I'll get a full collection. I'd love to get a really beautiful edition of all of Edgar Allan Poe's work. That was another big one. Um, <laughs> this is making it seem like my mom only read me creepy things, which is strange because that is absolutely not the case. But yeah, I'm very glad to own this and I can't wait to read through more of these stories as I go along, return to some of my old faves, um, re-experience some that I don't remember. I'm just glad that I finally have this in my collection. Last up, I have all of the books that I bought myself. Um, some of them are secondhand, some I bought at full price. I do have one pre-order that I'm gonna talk about first, and that is The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. I pre-ordered this last May because I was part of the hype. I have to know, this is a prequel to The Hunger Games, following President Snow during his Hunger Games. Um, is it during his Hunger Games? No, he is the mentor, that's what it is. For some reason I kept getting it mixed up. Um, this pre-order... <laughs> came with this big ol' sticker. And look at this under the cover. Isn't that fabulous? It's It's been a while since I have owned a new Hunger Games book. Um, I bought this for the nostalgia mostly. I pre-ordered Mockingjay and I read it all in one go the day it came out and, you know, like, I just have such nostalgia and joy for that memory that I was like, I gotta pre-order the new one. It just feels right in my heart. I still haven't read this. Um, I've been scared a little bit by some of the reviews, <laughs> but I'll let you know what I think of it myself when I eventually get to it. First, I need to reread The Hunger Games because I li I have not read them since I read Mockingjay. Like, whatever day Mockingjay came out, that was the last time I read a Hunger Games book. I really need to go back and read them again. Last May, I also bought two books preemptively for the Queer Lit Readathon that I participated in like the first week of June. So I bought Otherbound by Corinne Doivis. This is YA fantasy about two characters who basically share a brain space. There's Nolan who lives in our world and then there's Amara who lives in a fantasy world. And whenever Nolan blinks, whenever he closes his eyes even for an instant, he sees what Amara is seeing. And initially Amara isn't aware of this, but once she becomes aware of this, it becomes a very big issue because she is not comfortable with it at all. And uh, Nolan would also like to stop this shit because it's been giving him seizures, essentially. Both of the main characters of this book are people of color. They are also both disabled and Amara is bisexual. It's an absolutely brilliant book, a perfect, perfect comp to Sense8 that really deals with some of the questionable issues of two characters being connected in their brains. I just think Corinne Doivis is brilliant, so I'm going to link my Pride wrap-up if you want to hear more about this. I also bought another book that I have been scouring my room for and I can't for the life of me find it, so I'm just gonna put up a picture on the screen. <laughs> um, but it's Mean Little Deaf Queer by Terry Galloway. This is nonfiction about Terry's life growing up queer and deaf in America. Um, it is a very dry memoir. It was just written in a way that we used to write memoirs, a way that people wrote memoirs in like the 80s and 90s that just doesn't vibe with me as much. It's hard for me to stay focused, but I was fascinated by Terry's life and the things that she's taken away, what she's learned being deaf you know, how how she explains what that means for her and how her relationship to being disabled, how that connects to being deaf or hard of hearing, and how that connects to other things that Terry faces, along with her being queer, along with her being someone who wasn't easy to get along with, someone who didn't just go the way uh, that society wanted her to. So, like, there are so many things at work here. I think it's ultimately worth it, 
like I said, I can't for the life of me find my copy, but I did buy this last May and I read it at the beginning of June. So I also got one book at Half Price Books, and that is The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. This is the third book in the Broken Earth trilogy, which begins with the fifth season. Um, this is an adult fantasy trilogy. <sighs> I haven't had to explain the fifth season in a minute. Um, the fifth season is about a fantasy world on the brink of collapse. And in that world, there are a group of people who they have the ability to control the minerals within the earth, and there are different power levels within that. Um, and this is a world defined by na natural disasters, and so the impact of being able to control the earth should be a distinction, and yet the people who have this ability are completely shunned by their society. They are ostracized, they are the most oppressed group within their society. The whole trilogy is exploring like imbalances of power, how this group of people who should have power have been disenfranchised and had that taken away by oppressors over years and years until they've been silenced. I loved the fifth season. It was such an interesting book and I had the Obelisk Gate, which is the second book, but I didn't want to jump into the rest of the series until I could just reread the fifth season, and then binge the next two. One unfortunate thing about the fact that I grabbed this, I was at Half Price Books and I was like, holy shit, that's the Obelisk Gate. I can be done. I'll have the whole trilogy. I got home. I set the books next to each other. <laughs> They're different editions. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's just one of those things. Oh god. Oh. I wish I could describe to you the way that I felt happily getting home and I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna put all my books together, gonna line them up all on my bookshelf. One, two, I'll get over it. I'll get over it. Also, May of last year, something that was happening was the Asian Readathon, which I was participating in, and I picked up Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng because this was the group read for the Asian Readathon. I did not wind up getting to this, but my rationale was I'm going to read Little Fires Everywhere anyway, so pick it up on the off chance that you read it in May, and if you don't, it'll be fine. Little Fires Everywhere is set in a suburb in Cleveland, and it is about two women, one of whom who is determined to learn some kind of secret about the other's past, and that leads into more and more dark, complex stuff happening. Um, I read Everything I Never Told You in like 2018 maybe, and I didn't love it, but I've been curious about reading Celesting's next book because I've heard such great reviews of this and because I'm curious about watching the Hulu series because it got such great reviews more than anything else, but you know, it's a Celesting book. So I saw this at Target one day while we were out doing grocery shopping, grabbed a copy, and I'll read it someday. So the last thing that I have to talk about, we're at the very end, end of the haul, um, I actually have a trilogy to talk about. One of my faves, and there were these new UK covers released. I usually am not a person who gets multiple copies of my favorite books, but I couldn't resist these. <laughs> um, so I got the Inkheart Trilogy by Cornelia Funke. This is like a formative YA fantasy trilogy for me. Um, let me show you the, the book covers closer up. So we have Inkheart, Ink Spell, and Ink Death. Inkheart is about a girl who discovers that her father, Mo, who she loves, um, has the ability to read characters out of books. So this, these cover illustrations, um, the cover design was done by Steve Wells, and the cover illustration was done by Carl James Mountford. I just think that these covers are so much more reflective than the old covers of this story and this world. I'm obsessed with these like book illustrations along the bottom. I love how shiny they are and I mean, I love the color scheme of all three of them. These books and Cornelia Funke's work in general basically defined what I love about YA fantasy, so I did a little book depository shopping back in May because these are UK editions. It was the only way I knew how to get copies and 
I love them. I look at them every day and they make me happy. And that is how I know it was a perfect and very rational choice. The best purchase. Um, they're gorgeous. <laughs> okay, everybody, that is it. This is the end of this episode of Hall of Shame. <laughs> We've now officially covered everything that I bought everything that I was sent in the month of May 2020. Please let me know if any of these sounded like a book you would really love to read, and let me know which of these I should put at like the top of my to read list. What do I need to prioritize the most? If you happen to leave a comment, I would absolutely love if you left a sunshine emoji along with it. Y'all know that makes me the absolute happiest. <laughs> Other than that, I just want to say thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I can't wait to share uh, more of Hall of Shame and talk about more books that I got in June. So I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!